In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this interesting wall decor piece using all items from the Dollar Tree. So if you want to learn how I did it, well, then follow me. What's up, Glue Dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter, hiding out in my bedroom because it's the only quiet place I could find right now. <laughs> Today's project is a Pier 1 inspired wall decor art. My last Pier 1 inspired wall decor art it was super popular. So this one's completely different. And the funny thing is, it is completely different than the wall art that inspired it. <laughs> so I started out trying to make that one, wasn't working, taking too long. I thought there's gotta be a quicker way. My fingers were killing me. And then I ended up morphing into it, just a completely different project, but different, but much easier, super cheap to make, inexpensive, well, let's say, we won't say cheap, super inexpensive to make and actually pretty fun. So I'm really excited to show it to you and see what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments below what you do think of that project. Also, if you're liking my videos and the effort that I'm putting in, give me a thumbs up and let me know. So I also, the best part is when you hit that subscribe button down below. If you hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it, you'll know when I upload new videos. Another thing down below is there's a link where you can enter your email address to win a really cute little blinged out owl keychain. It's adorable. Every first of the month I draw for that and announce the winner usually in a live uh, feed, which is also another chance that I get to interact with you guys and I absolutely love it. We have so much fun on the live feeds once a month. So if you're interested in winning that, that's the place to do it. So good luck. And oh, I don't wanna forget, I do have a Facebook group called Midnight Crafter Glue Dots. So I would love to see your posts of projects that you are remaking of the projects that I have posted because it's really cool to see how you guys modify and change up and put your touch and your creativity on the projects that I have come up with. So please feel free to head on over there and join that group and post away because I can't wait to see. It's so much fun. That's kind of a great feedback for me because I'm putting this out for you and then you guys put that back to me and then I can see how it worked out and it's awesome. So enough chitter chatter because I've been told lately a couple times that I talk too much. So let's go do it. <laughs> So starting out, what we're gonna do is take our foam board and you can take any size that you want and using your pencil, kind of get an idea of like how you want your image to be and kind of figure out how you want your rolling hills to go. Not that you have to stick to that when you do it, but you know, just to give you a general idea and then you can play with that as you go. From there, kind of figuring out the placement of where you would like your trees to go. And again, you may change it as you go along, but that's fine. Just if you feel comfortable not doing it with a pencil and just going straight right from the get-go, then go for it. And I usually like to do things with decorating or with anything like that, you usually wanna do things in odd numbers. So I'm gonna do probably three trees on here and different sizes so that they look like they're a little more dimensional. So I'm kind of just giving uh, no real end to the branches, just sort of mid air. So don't worry too much if they're perfect or not. Don't overthink it. I just try and give a little bit of variety. So the next step we're gonna do now that we have that drawn out is we're gonna take any kind of piece of plastic. This is the lid to uh, um, cremini mushrooms that I <laughs> used for dinner last night. So I'm just gonna cut this piece off. If any piece of plastic, you can use the container top from a coffee can, anything. Plastic is better because the 
moisture from the caulk um, will end up kind of softening any paper. So I've cut out my square here and all I'm gonna do on one of the edges, I'm just gonna cut out some tiny little triangles. And you don't have to worry about them being super symmetrical or perfect because that is what's going to add really some nice dimension to your project. Go across all the way across your piece and make those cuts and we're going to be using that to make the texture of our hills. So we're using, we're going to probably be using two tubes of the caulking. So what you're going to want to do is one of them, you want to just cut a big, big hole on it because that's mainly how you're going to be getting a lot of product out for you to do some of the main work. So this is where you're going to just be putting this on. Give me! This stuff, every time, it farts on me, every time. But just mostly here, just squeeze it out. We're gonna be spreading that out a bit. So using a popsicle stick, I'm gonna kinda of spread this. Again, don't worry about it being perfect because you're gonna go over it with the plastic piece that we just cut up to give it some texture. Okay, so now we're going to use this little piece of plastic or whatever you used for that. And you're just going to go over this and just make a textured, make it textured, I don't know. <laughs> and you can kind of play with that texture and just wherever you want to change up the direction or if you want to bring your hills coming different ways, this is your project, so have fun with it. They're your hills, so they can be however you want them to be. And the texture looks amazing at the end when we spray paint it, so don't be afraid to really get in there and make some nice designs. The next thing we're going to do is work on our trees. And the way you're going to do that, same way, you're going to put the caulking down in position to pretty much follow your tree line. I don't know if you guys can see my lines, but... And then you're just going to use your skewer stick because this gives great texture to the tree. And it looks very realistic, well, realistic, I guess, for an art project, but it looks really cool once it's painted. So you're just going to spread this with the end of your skewer stick. I think I'm going to make this one tree come down into the grass area or my hillside area. Now as I get kind of the ends, I sort of taper it off. I'm not really having a blunt edge on those. I'll put a link in up above um, or at the end, one of the two, or maybe both. Um, if you haven't seen my last video, which was a mosaic video, you may want to watch that because another idea for this would be to make some of the leaves the way that I made them for that mosaic video and put the leaves on here. That would be absolutely gorgeous. But since I've already done that, we're going to do something a little different here for this project. And you know, you can always combine the two projects together. Excellent. So the next thing we're going to do is you're going to be using the caulking one of the tubes and you're only going to cut a very tiny hole. Budget. So this tube I did not use entirely. So you really could get away with doing this with two tubes, but um, we do definitely need the tip to be much smaller for this next part. So. We're gonna just very, very close to the edge there, cut off just as little as possible so that the hole is small as compared to the last one we did where we cut it much further and you get a much larger hole so you can do get a lot more out of there. So now is where we're gonna be doing our little swirls and our, not really leaves, but kind of leaves. So start wherever you want. I'm gonna start on the tip and just very little bit, make sure you go around and around and around and go slowly, don't rush on this part. And make sure that the 
caulking is actually sticking down, touching down on the foam board when you're doing it. So we're going to go around and just do all of those in various places, kind of work our way around. This is just so, so cool once it's painted. Now, if your swirls end up a little funky, don't panic. Don't worry about it. It just makes it that much more interesting and unique. So like, see that swirl's not all perfect, but just make it your own and make it unique. Oh, see like a big chunk out of that one. But it does look really cool in the long run. So don't worry about it. Periodically wipe the tip off because if you don't, it sometimes starts to dry up a bit and it will make it a little harder to make your swirls. Also, as you go along and the tube starts to get emptier, you can sort of start to fold it down to make it a little easier on your hand and not have to squeeze as much. So I'm pretty satisfied with the way this is looking at this point. Now the hard part is letting this dry. You don't have to let it dry completely before spray painting it, which is nice. Um, but we're going to let it dry a little bit at least. And then I just also wanted to show you that I used about, I would say three quarters of this tube. So you can get all the little swirls, depending again on how big your project is or how many swirls you make. So I think realistically, um, from what I have left that you can do this with two tubes of caulking all together. So while I'm waiting for this to dry a little bit, I'm going to put it aside. And since I already know we're going to have to do our, um, get our bring, get our bring back right there. I already know that we're going to need to prep our bling wrap. We only need one row of this. So I'm going to be cutting this because I had this piece, but you can buy this at Dollar Tree in, I think three or five rows it comes in, but we're only going to be using a single row and we're going to be, once everything is dry, we're going to be actually gluing this around the outer edge to cover that raw edge of the foam core board. Okay. So this hasn't been all that long, but it has started a little bit to dry. I can see some of the edges drying. So I'm going to go out and give it a spray with my Rust-Oleum metallic spray paint. You can use any color you want, anything you want. I really like the metallics because it gives a really elegant and expensive look to this. So I'm going to get that sprayed and let it dry. And so this is completely dry. Well, I shouldn't say completely dry. It's not so much that you could really put a lot of pressure on it, but it's dry and enough that we can actually go ahead and start gluing our bling wrap around. So we're going to do that and then we're going to do the final steps. So just put your glue with your hot glue gun along this edge and then we're just going to be gluing down this bling wrap so that it has just a little bit of a finished look and not a raw edge like that. Okay, so the edge is all on there all the way around. I've got a nice finished edge. And the next thing we're going to be doing is adding, and it's actually the final touch. I'm going to take some black paint and a paper towel with your dry paper towel. You're going to put a little bit of black paint and then you're going to sort of swoosh it on there so that it's into the paper towel. And then what we're going to be doing is just going directly onto the silver part. Well, the whole thing's silver, so that's kind of lame. The, <laughs> the raised part, you're just going to go over that with your black paint. And this kind of adds a bit more to the dimension and breaks up that overabundance of silver. If you like that, that much silver, great. I just, I think it looks really nice to sort of break it up a bit. I mean, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do anything you don't want to because we That's actually are going to be putting a little bit onto that background afterwards, but the, I don't want it to be too dark on that background right now, which is why I'm pretty much just aiming for the branches and the, the, well, the little squigglies, the raised parts. Okay. So then afterwards you do want to just break up and make, I think it will add a lot to the background. All I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take my paper towel and dip it in just a little bit of water to kind of um, really dilute down that black. And even if you want, you can flip it 
And then we're just gonna sort of rub over the silver part, the, the background part. Now again, if you don't wanna do this, leave this part out. I, I like it, I think it um, just adds more and, and breaks up. I think it gives it a more expensive look. Um, so you don't really realize that it's foam core over there. Now you've gotta be careful not to saturate too much because this foam core, well, probably not as much now that it's been painted, but it will absorb, as you can see over here a little bit, I got some wrinklies because when it was wet, the paper started to lift away. That was from over spray painting. So you do need to be a little careful to not overdo it with the water. All right, I'm gonna be finishing this up here and then what I'm gonna do is put this up on the wall with command strips because this is such a nice and light thing being just on the foam core that the command strips will work beautifully on this. So if you're ready to see it, oh, you're not gonna see it yet until you give me that thumbs up, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Join us and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. I would love to see your projects. So feel free also to post those in the Midnight Crafter Glue Dots Facebook group. Anyway, let me show you this up on the wall.